in an earlier video, I walked through the programs I'd been using to go from an idea through CAD, CAM, and a controller program to download the G code to the CNC machine. Via a comment, I was made aware of Fusion 360 as an option for a combination of CAD and CAM. In this video, I will go through some of my early experiences with that program. Here we are in Fusion 360. Uh, this is the main screen with your canvas. And on this side, you have uh, all your projects. You can select one uh, and it will open. And then you can basically close this panel to uh, give you some more room on the uh, canvas. You have uh, the uh, different parts of the program here, model, render, animation, simulation, and cam. Uh, and I will not go through this, and this is not supposed to be a training uh, video. There's a, a lot of uh, good training material uh, on YouTube. Uh, so I'll just show a few of the things I uh, experienced and took me a while to uh, figure out. Uh, so maybe you can uh, avoid making the same mistakes uh, that I have done. First thing I would point out is uh, that uh, whenever you download the software, it comes uh, with a direction of the X, Y, and Z axis that at least to me was uh, very unlogical. Uh, and it took several discussions before I uh, got the right hint as to what to do. Uh, so I'll point that out. So if you go to your account and preferences, then uh, you get to this page. And uh, here uh, you can see that it says Z up, but the default is Y up. Uh, so uh, if you want uh, to have Z up, you basically have to go here and change it to Z up. And then of course you also want to have your units uh, in whatever you prefer, and I'm using millimeters. And the next thing I will mention is that it's a parametric uh, program. Uh, so uh, you can actually set up different parameters for your uh, project, and then you can reference to these parameters as you go. This is the uh, scheme that you can fill out and you can make some use of param par parameters. Uh, let's say that we want to do something in plywood. Uh, we uh, would like to uh, be able to change the thickness of the plywood. Uh, and uh, it could be that uh, I'm making the drawing with 12 millimeter uh, plywood, but then later I want to ch change uh, that to 24 millimeter plywood. And then by putting in it as a user parameter, you can actually ask the whole drawing to be updated uh, with a new number. So let's just make a few uh, more. Uh, we can make a X. It could be the width of uh, something, and we could say that it's a uh, 50 millimeter, and we could make a Y. For some reason, you have to give it something where it has more than one uh, letter here, so you have to at least two, and you can also give it some more meaningful ones than I'm doing. Uh, this is just to make it quick and easy, and then maybe a diameter. And I could say that the diameter is um, the half of the X1 uh, that I just put in, so it will then be 25. So you can basically also put in calculations uh, here in these uh, expressions. So it's extremely uh, powerful way to put up. And of course, this is of course super simple uh, just to show how you do it idea of how you make something in Fusion 360 is that you start out uh, making a sketch, which is a 2D uh, drawing, a uh, classical one with dimensions and uh, squares and circles and so on and so forth. Then, then you can extrude these uh, sketches into bodies, then it becomes a 3D object. And you can uh, work on these bodies, but if you want to continue, uh, then uh, you would actually most likely want to turn these bodies into components, which are, uh, it could be a screw, it could be a nut, it could be a plate, it could be whatever uh, elements that you would then end up uh, joining together 
uh, into an, an assembly. And that is kind of the uh, cascade of things you will go through. Um, you don't always need to start with a sketch. You can also directly create a body uh, using some of these uh, functions up here under the create. So that is another option. And I will uh, I will show you just real quick how you can go from sketch to body. Uh, and uh, in a later video, I will also try to do the whole uh, set of things here, but that will not be in, in this video here. So let's go back to the empty workspace uh, and then see how it uh, works out uh, doing uh, something very, very simple. So the first thing I want to do is basically make my sketch. And you hit the sketch and then you get uh, the option to put your sketch on any of the three planes. Um, and you can see here uh, now the blue is up and the blue is a Z-X. So that uh, would have looked different, uh, different if I hadn't changed in my user preference. So I want to do it in the uh, X and Y uh, plane. So this is here and the two others here would be uh, Z uh, and X and Y and X. So I'll use the X, Y and I click on that and then I'm it kind of uh, turns around and puts you looking right down on that. And you can look on the cube up here. It also says top um, on it. Uh, and that's of course because we now are looking from the top. Let's draw a rectangle. I hit R for rectangle and I will be just pulling it out here to an arbitrary size. Uh, and then I'll just click again and then it puts it up here. Then now I would uh, basically dimension this one and I hit D for dimension and I go out here with my dimension and maybe I would like to have this to be my Y uh, parameter. And you can see that it turned from red to black, uh, meaning that now it is something that it recognizes, and it gives it a, um, a number here, D5. So I could also reference to D5 if I wanted to use that uh, for a later dimension. So that is this one, and you can see now it says Fx in front, uh, and that means that, um, and this was X1. And it's got D6. Uh, and then I want to put my circle in the center here. Um, and just to be sure that I'm doing that, I will just start with uh, making a line. I hit L for line. I will draw my center line here. And you can see the center line here is this triangle with a cross on. Um, so now it is a center line. I'll hit escape to get out of line mode. I'll highlight the, uh, the line here and then I will go over here on the uh, sketch palette and just call this a construction line. Then it become a dashed line instead. Uh, but you still have uh, the option to uh, snap to it and so on. So I'll, make, I'll hit the C button to make a circle and I'll just put it again in an arbitrary place. Give it the dimension here or size here. Click. Uh, okay, click D for dimension. I'll put it that dimension over here, and I'll just call that dial. And here we go. So now it is uh, restricted to this center line uh, by this uh, constraint here, and the center line is uh, restrained to the center point of this line. So there is a number of constraints that are now in place. I'll just expand it with a little box here. I'll go to the circle. I'll follow the circle, hit the uh, uh, mouse button, and then you can see that a circle with a line on top, which is the tangent constraint, was uh, made active there. I'll do and then finally, I will make this one here down to this point here. Um, and there is a tangent constraint here, but I also would like this one to be parallel with that one. So I just hit the parallel. Uh, this one should be parallel to this one and then it straighten it up. I want to see uh, how the, uh, the, the different parameters work together. Uh, I can just open this one and then change one of them. And let's see uh, how about changing the, uh, the, the, the width of it. Uh, to something different. We could say it should be uh, uh, 40 instead. 
and it should impact both the width and also the diameter of the circle because we have made those depend and yes it did both of them changed so that is how it uh, it works uh, with the parameters so now that we are done with the sketch it uh, moves back to the 3d view uh, and you can uh, move it around uh, here uh, as you wish uh, and then let's try to uh, do some extrusions here. Uh, first, uh, let's envision that we want to uh, put this uh, uh, whole plate, uh, extrude that one. We hit E for extrude and I select the different parts of the uh, plate. And then I want to extrude that to uh, minus five millimeters like that. And it will create a new body. Uh, um, and you will see the new body appearing uh, up here, like that. Uh, and you can toggle it on and off. Uh, and you can toggle the sketch on and off. The sketch is still on top because we extruded this one down. Now I did it five millimeter, but I could also have done it to the thickness of my plywood. So um, why don't we do that uh, real quick here? Go to the parameters and uh, say here extrude and minus five and then just say minus supply and then it should go to 12 millimeters like that it did like that so this is now uh, connected to the ply then if we take uh, this one for example uh, up five millimeters extrude this one uh, and you can see it will make a new body, it says, I would say, okay, five millimeters. And oops, then this is one of the things that happens. Now it changes to join. So now it's want to join this one, the new one, together with the big base here. Uh, and if I hit, then uh, it will basically remove a body over here uh, and join it into one. I don't want that. I want to have a new body here. So I hit new body, I have to change it on the operation and hit new body. And then I got a third one here. I can throw that on and off. Same story. Let's go for, for this one here, extrude. Hit it at what we want to extrude. We maybe want to make this 50 millimeters like that. Goes up and again, it says join. And again, if you don't want to join, then you have to go back and change it to something else. And I want to have a new body. So I said yes. So now I have my uh, next body here. I can toggle that on and off. I can toggle that one on and off. And I can toggle that one on and off. So uh, that is uh, uh, an important part to remember to do that. So it changes based on what it believes you're going to do. And if you're not going to do, uh, do that, you have to be aware. Let's just try to see what one of the other things are doing. Uh, I'll make a sketch on this plane here, just a simple circle. Let's do like that, a circle of five millimeter in dimension, uh, like that. And then let's extrude that one. Extrude this one and this one. And then, um, I would like to do it, for example, distance to, and then maybe to the back side of this one, like that. And you can see all of a sudden it changed to cut because now it believes that that is the most likely uh, thing I want to do. And let's just assume that that is what I want to do. So I say, okay. And then I now have a hole cut through the whole thing. And again, if I struggle my things on and off. Oh, this is not necessary. You can see the hole here uh, in this body here. So you have the hole through all the different bodies. So um, that's the way you need to do it. Uh, in order to have new bodies created, you have to change it to new body. You have to uh, look at what the extrude command is saying and be sure that this is what you really want to do. So uh, in the next video, I will uh, show a little more on, on some small projects I made uh, where I did use both the uh, uh, model uh, and the cam. As a final thing, uh, I think I would like to show just uh, real quick uh, some of these uh, create where you basically make a body 
uh, immediately. So if we do it on the same plane as we did here, you simply draw your thing here, and then it's already there. It's creating a new body. You can see it here. Okay, and then you have a new body. So it's a very easy way to do a number of different uh, things here. Uh, if we want to put it here, like that. So this is very SketchUp-like uh, way to do uh, do the different things. Um, um, making a hole like that. Maybe we want to put in a thread. So you can see this is a, a lot of different things you can do uh, very easily. So I think that will be all I'll go through in this video. Thank you.